Good afternoon. Welcome to my laboratory. Uh, as, uh, as I promised earlier, here I'm going to show the uh, components in detail of the uh, tinsel coil 4 MOT to DC powered uh, Tesla coil. This is the monster microwave oven transformer uh, that I pulled out of an old microwave oven. I gather that it's a little different. This is the first one that I've played with. I gather that it's a little different from more modern ones. This is the AC line input to the primary down here. And then this is the high voltage secondary that's uh, sealed in plastic. And then it has another, uh, just a few turns secondary uh, down here that provides the really, really high current for the magnetron heater, I guess. 3.2 volts, 15 amps is one of its outputs, so we're not using that. Uh, but we are using the high voltage output. And that comes out, I, just, I was able to adapt all of the all of the wires here, just wires that were also in the microwave to start with. Uh, so th that's the high voltage uh, out and uh, return. And then this uh, connector block cover was all up in there too, so I just decided to keep it on there just for just so that it looks safe, right? <laughs> Even though it's not okay. And then on this platform here, there were mounted um, a, a, the diode and resi bleeder resistor combo uh, or some kind of resistor up, uh, up on there. I'm not using those, I took those off. I have my own diodes. And then this is the line cord from the original microwave that I've just uh, put some connectors on uh, to go to the terminal block there. And then on the plug-in end of it, I've uh, stripped the insulation off and just uh, made the wires available so that I can uh, put a clamp-on current meter around there. And then this goes into the Variac uh, to control the input to this uh, monster microwave. I think this is a one and a half kilowatt input uh, guy. And so I mounted it on a piece of wood. It's really heavy and then rigged up kind of a little rope handle carriage cradle for it. All right, so let's set that down. Oops, and of course we'll end up dropping it anyway. And then uh, this is the diode module here, so the output from the microwave oven goes into this full wave bridge into these terminals. And each one of these is a 7.5 kilovolt, uh, 1.3 amp diode. And I've got them screwed together into this full wave bridge. So the AC comes in here, and then the positive DC output comes out the cathodes and up into here. And then the negative DC output comes out here and into the cap bank. And that negative output just goes right through the capacitor bank to uh, the low end of the primary coil and also to the movable electrode of the spark gap. Okay. And then there's the capacitor bank, which is made up of uh, 14 of these 40 nanofarad, 5 kilovolt caps. Uh, and that's what they are. They're Accushionet something or others. Point. 0 0.04 nanofarad, and then I measured, or microfarad, and then I measured this at uh, 152 nanofarads, this whole series parallel arrangement. Um, and I've got these, I'm experimenting with bleeder resistors. These are, uh, sometimes I use them and sometimes I don't, depending on the current input. These are 1.89 uh, mega ohm resistors. I really need to put bigger ones on there. But I keep a jumper across this cap bank to keep it shorted for safety when it's not in use. And then whenever I do actually use it, I always uh, take a screwdriver and uh, stick it in to short it out completely. 
uh, whenever I'm making any kind of an adjustment onto the system because it does store a heck of a charge. Okay, the spark cap that I'm using is very simple. It's just a couple of cabinet knobs, spherical brass cabinet knobs. Uh, one of them, of course, goes to one end of the capacitor bank, uh, and the other, the movable one, goes to the bottom end of the primary coil and the negative polarity of the DC input. Okay, and then there's oh, let me remove this. Then there's the primary coil itself. It's uh, held to the mount by this little uh, pillory block here. I guess you can see how that works. And it's about, uh, how many, oh, comes in here, goes one, two, three, four, four and a half turns about, but I have it uh, tapped at about two and a third turns, which is where I determined from both calculation and experiment the uh, tap should be. So I made a little uh, clamp out of some copper sheet to make good contact there and then used some really really heavy wire to come over to the other end of the coil which is trapped in the pillory block there. And, uh, and then I made these very simple uh, supports, just two of them, to support the quarter inch soft copper tubing that I made the spiral out of. Okay. And then I mounted this uh, piece of wood sized precisely on the sander uh, to the plastic base and uh, then over here is the sparking grounded electrode. Uh, it's an aluminum shape and some support hardware and this special little coil over here and then the wiring and mounting that connect it to the board's ground terminal there. Okay, And then uh, I use a PVC spacer there and this helps to adjust the coupling coefficient between the coil primary and the coil secondary by allowing you to vary the height of the secondary and so the spacing in between the turns of the primary and the secondary. Okay, now the secondary itself is a piece of white PVC pipe four and a quarter inches in diameter and it's wound with 750 turns of number 27 enameled magnet wire and then sprayed with uh, about two cans of uh, Krylon uh, and then the ends are coated with some Corona dope, red Corona dope and then it's terminated with this braid into a little stick up terminal and then this just makes a, a pressure contact with the uh, top capacity and I made these end pieces out of out of uh, uh, Luan mahogany and then it's a some kind of a a uh, gift wrap roll or something like that in the center there and you see all the way through that And then there's the bottom terminal there with a wing nut on it. And this just uh, slides onto the support like that. And sits there nicely. And then the ground lead is connected up to the wing nut. Like that. And then these are parts for the toroid. To support the toroid inside the sphere, or rather inside the tube, I found that uh, this medicine bottle is actually is a really good fit. So then I have some other bits and pieces of plastic and aluminum tubing on there. And uh, then there's the toroid itself, which I made out of uh, some flexible dryer duct um, cut to the right shape to to hold 
the ends together, I can't even find the seam anymore. Ah, there it is. There's the seam. To hold the uh, cut ends together in the shape, I glued it with uh, yellow scotch weather strip adhesive and then covered the seam with some aluminum duct tape to smooth it out. And you can hardly even tell where the join is. The adhesive worked quite well to make the make the thing. Okay, so then we can assemble it to the support structure. Just stick that in here. And then this little spice dish goes on there. And then I tap the doorknob uh, to fit that that threaded phenolic rod. And there's the toroid structure ready to be installed. It goes in there. And then the toroid just presses down onto that contact terminal and that's 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 it. So I hook up the microwave oven transformer, plug it into the variac, turn it and oh yeah, I forgot about the air nozzle. The spark gap has uh, the air nozzle here. I made this out of some kind of a stock uh, plumbing fitting with uh, some copper tube soldered to it and some piece of plastic tubing for strain relief and insulation and then a fitting to go to a uh, compressed airline. And then the adjusting bit is uh, just a plastic bolt and a spring so that I can adjust the spacing of the gap that pivots on this screw here. And uh, that is that is it. The tinsel coil 4 in uh, full detail. Thank you for watching.